Hi there, my name is Sean. I uh, welcome to Steam Cuisine. Uh, today we are playing H1Z1, which is a zombie survival uh, game in the similar theme to Rust or Reign of Kings or uh, DayZ is probably the most well-known version of this uh, game. So we're going to go and make our character. Uh, today's topic for our food is the beginner's guide. So I've decided that over the next few months I'm going to give a episode by episode breakdown of how to cook and basically be able to learn how to cook from scratch over a period of a couple of months watching my episodes. Um, so today we're going to be uh, talking about the benefits of cooking, what cooking is, and some of the techniques involved. And we're going to go ahead and also talk about the components of flavor. And then at the end, I'm going to go ahead and give a nice simple recipe for a chicken soup for these cold months that anybody can make. So starting off, this is H1Z1. As you can see, it's kind of a pretty game. Very, very beautiful graphics. Um, I played this when it first came out in beta, and it was very, very rough. But uh, at now, it's actually very, very nice, and they've done a lot with it and kept it updated. So we're going to go ahead and move some stuff. I need to... yeah, I have too many sticks. So we're going to go ahead and shred... oh, that's the belt pouch. I actually need to move things to the belt pouch. Uh, we're going to shred our shirt to start with, which is so that we can get some cloth, because we need to make a bow. So this game has a great crafting system where you can discover all kinds of recipes, build structures, build weapons, do all kinds of things, which is really, really nice. Um, I need to learn how to make arrows. There we go. That's excellent. Ooh, punji sticks. Okay, perfect. Is there stuff for scrap? Yep. Oh, there's the bandana. The satchel. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and craft ourselves a makeshift bow. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and make maximum arrows. Um, so to start with, I'd like to talk about the benefits of learning how to cook. Um, a lot of people have told me that they don't know how to cook and that when they try to learn it's too complicated, it doesn't make a lot of sense, or why should they, like there's food everywhere. Give me sticks. You suck. I want sticks. There we go. Um, like it ends up being a laziness thing, or they're just intimidated, and or they just don't like to. And I think a lot of that comes from multiple sources. Um, for most people, I think, though, it becomes a... It does take some effort to cook something. And it takes time. And in this day and age, we don't do time very well. Um, we want food now. We don't want to wait. We want to, to get our food, have it either microwaved or brought to us. And that's what we do. And I think that you're, you're missing out on a lot of the experience of eating is, is making your own food or making food for others, uh, especially. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down into about four real main benefits of learning how to cook. First of all, cost. It's just easier and cheaper to make food than it is to go to a restaurant and order it. Um, one of my best examples is the steak dinner. When you go to a steakhouse, even a reasonably priced one, you're going to be paying between $20 and $30 for a steak dinner. And the reason why it's that expensive is that you are paying for the building, you're paying for drinks that are way overpriced, you're paying for the labor of the server who's bringing you your food, you're paying all these extra costs that you don't incur when you're at your house. Um, you can easily make yourself a great steak dinner at home for between 12, uh, 10 and $12. If, um, if you ended up... Ooh, we got a mercenary crate. If you went to the store and bought whatever steak is on sale, you could end up getting... Uh, your steak for between $7 a pound and $10 a pound. 
and a pound of steak is a lot of steak. Most restaurants serve between an 8 ounce and a 12 ounce portion, and usually their pound steaks are way more expensive. I have gone to the store and found ribeye steaks, bone-in ribeye steaks, for $10 a pound. That means I can get basically two steaks that I would get at a steakhouse for $10. But if I don't really shouldn't be eating a pound steak, so I would get an eight ounce steak and then I would still have the money to buy potatoes for mashed potatoes and frozen vegetables to make a vegetable medley or even fresh veggies if it's in season. And I could make that steak dinner at home for 12 bucks, which is infinitely cheaper than uh, going out and buying it. So why don't people more people do that? First of all, I think that they they don't believe that they can get the same results that the restaurant does. And I'm telling you that that's just not true. You have most of the tools to make a steak dinner at home. You have an uh, if you have an oven, oh, that's a zombie. If you have an oven and a stovetop, give me your zombie. Yeah, still got the touch. Um, if you've got a stove and an oven, now we have goggles, a stove and an oven and a pot and a pan, you can make a steak dinner. You can, you just need to learn the techniques. And that segues, uh, into one of my later parts that we'll talk about later. Um, the second reason why you want to learn how to cook is it's impressive. Um, if you're trying to woo somebody or, or show off to your significant other, Cooking is a great way to do that. It's something that shows that you're willing to take time and care to make something special for them versus just showing that you have the money to be able to take them somewhere. And making somebody a wonderful chicken dinner on a Saturday night is going to be much more romantic and much nicer than going through the hassle of going out to eat, dressing up, paying for all the things, worrying about the money driving, all that stuff. You're at your house, you're at your home, you're comfortable, and you're going to have a delicious meal that is going to allow you to spend more money on the delicious bottle of wine rather than on the food itself. So we are looking for civilization. It looks like something. Why is it? Oh, somebody's built something? What the heck? What is this? Somebody's just made barricades out here? Weird. It's so creepy, too. What the heck? Okay. That's bizarre. Um, so, next, uh, the final two things are for reasons to cook or health um, you're getting to control what goes into your food so you're able to make food that isn't full of chemicals like red dye 40 or uh, Zorbital gum or uh, palm oil and this means that you're going to be eating cleaner and you're just going to feel better you're going to have more nutrition you're going to have more vitamins more nutrients just from eating good food and you're going to feel fuller like you're going to be able to eat more because it isn't bad for you um eating a balanced meal is just really going to help and then you also get to take in the fact that it's fun like you get to be creative in the kitchen there's not many things you can do to play around with something and then get to consume it for benefits. Like, you can try out to make a new soup. Like, you can be like, oh, I really like uh, jalapeno poppers, but I don't want to eat jalapeno poppers. What if I made a jalapeno popper soup? And you can do that. You can play around with these techniques and learn... Like, if you know how to make clam chowder, you probably could make something very similar to a uh, jalapeno popper soup. And that's fun. Like, you can discover things. It's an area that is not fully explored. Heck, the cronut was only invented, what, a year ago? That means there's new things to discover in food. And what other things, what other areas can you discover something new for cheap? Like, that's an amazing thing to me. Um... 
so this brings me to my main uh, main topic for today, which is what is cooking? Well, the definition of cooking is to uh, to heat food or prepare food using heat to gain access to more nutrients in it, basically. That's the most basic thing. But for our definitions, cooking is to prepare food, right? Now, to prepare food can be done in many different ways. What we call that in the industry is techniques. And the secret to cooking is that you just learn techniques. And then you're able to use those techniques in combination to make a meal. Um, for example, the steak dinner we talked about. There are just a few techniques that go into making a steak dinner, such as searing, broiling, boiling, sauteing, and mixing, and some knife skills. Knife skills are considered a technique, but really, they really are their own thing. Um, so, one of the other things that you get the benefit of is, is that techniques are usually related to one another in some way. So, somebody in this house? a noise um most techniques are related to one another they kind of fall into categories we will go ahead and eat these peaches um so you things like the the sauteing sweating frying and searing are all like pan based techniques and that once you kind of learn one of them the other ones are just variations of the same technique and this allows you to you don't have to learn a bunch of different techniques and be like oh this is so totally different than something else no you're gonna be like oh sweating is just sauteing on a lower heat and with not so much stirring like that's basically like the difference oh i still don't have enough cloth I need one more cloth i want to make a satchel so i can hold that stuff um so my plan is to, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to go ahead and split these episodes to be once er uh, every other week, and in the intervening weeks, I will ta uh, talk about just a simple food subject of some sort. But in these beginning epi uh, beginner's guide episodes, I'm going to go ahead and start with knife skills, since m almost all food uses knife skills in some way. And then I'm going to go ahead and ta uh, talk about a certain category of technique and talk about them and how to do them. Ooh, that's really good. Uh, Spool of Twine is really rare in this game, and I can make a better bow. Um, see if I can actually do that right now. So it would be stick, twine, cloth. Yeah, that makes the real bow. I want more cloth though first, um, and that will that will after we get through all the techniques, then we can go into the more more focused things, and we'll be well on our way to being able to cook anything we want. Um, so the next topic would be talking about how how flavors work in food and and how to make something taste good. Um, a lot of people think that cooks are just Oh, there's just miraculous at, like, being able to make something taste good. No, they're using a simple principle, which is, is balance. Um, you, you basically have five flavors to... Oh, that is a AR machine gun. That's amazing. And I will also take this barbecue chicken sandwich that I have no space for. Um... Somebody in the house. Let's close the doors. Sorry, this just got really creepy. Um, you have high flavors. You have uh, salty, sweet, sour, and bitter. And then you have the fifth flavor, which is umami, which I will talk about in a little bit. Um, what you have is that you have these four flavors. And to make them work well together they need to be kind of balanced now obviously like cakes are gonna be sweeter than steak but you don't want just straight sweet right you want to have some contrast so a lot of recipes will have something like 
uh, cake. Let's take cake, for example. Cake is predominantly sweet, but most of the time it has a, a backup flavor. So, like, you had have... Um, sorry if I just got really close to the camera. I was leaning in. Um, you will have usually a flavor to go with it. So, chocolate... Chocolate's actually considered a bitter thing. Like, most chocolate contains some level of bitterness. Milk chocolate obviously has the least amount of bitterness, but dark chocolate's very bitter. And then that bitterness adds something to it. What, what is going on in this thing? Mercenary crate from the natural world. Open crate? Oh, I need a key. Yeah. Ah, that's the only downside of this game is stupid microtransactions. Wish I could open that, but I ain't paying money. Um, so, you would usually have, like, chocolate for bitterness, or um, white cake with strawberries is another classic one. Um, that allows you to... Um, that gives you some tartness to it, so some sour. And that sour balances out that sweet. Um... And even a little bit of bitter. Now, most foods aren't just one thing. Obviously, sugar's just sweet. But most things are a combination of stuff. Like, onions can be sweet, but they're mostly bitter. Uh, or at least considered a bitter. Um, and the secret is to learn how to balance these. And, that, and in the beginning, you're not going to have a good sense of, like, what you need to do to balance something. Um, and that's what recipes are for. Recipes are great guides to learn... I still have no space for that. Uh, to learn... Sunglasses? Uh, to learn what combinations work. And then you can kind of go off of that as you learn. You're able to go, okay, I know that bacon and potatoes go really well together in this recipe I did. So maybe bacon and potatoes will work really well in this other thing. I don't suggest anybody start cooking without recipes. Like, just going to town and making something, you're probably going to make something awful. And you're going to be discouraged because you made something awful. And that's why put yourself through that. Start with a recipe. Like, follow a recipe. See if that helps. Oh, you are a gnarly looking dude. Uh, I didn't get you in the head. Leave me alone. Thank you. Jeez. I'll wear your hat. Um, I want it to be daylight so bad. Um, so that's, that's basically what you want to start to do is like my tips for this first episode would be start with recipes. Um, and try to start with like recipes from people you kind of trust. Um, don't just go online and look up a random recipe by a random person. Start with foodnetwork.com. Like, Alton Brown, great recipes. Even Emeril Lagasse, good recipes. Now, if the recipe has a bunch of ingredients you don't understand or techniques, don't do that recipe. If you don't understand something, don't do it. Um, go ahead and find something simple. Find some food that you like out at a restaurant. Look up recipes for that. Um, one of the, the things I learned to make because I liked it at restaurants was biscuits and gravy. I learned how to make biscuits and gravy because I loved it at restaurants, and I looked up a recipe, and I made that recipe, and then I went on and, go and started to tweak it and toot it. Uh, these are both industry terms we call a uh, gay shirt shred. Um... You can go ahead and, and start to start the next step after learning recipes is tweaking recipes. Being able to take a recipe and making it your own and making changes to make it better for you because everybody has different taste. Somebody might find something too spicy. Somebody might find something uh, not spicy enough. And that's really going to be what we're going to end up talking about over these next few weeks. Um, a few months, actually. Um, so, to, f to end this episode, I want to talk about a food that I think everybody should know how to make, and that anybody can make, and that's a really good chicken soup. For this recipe, you're going to need a small 
chicken whole. And you're also going to need... Is this all one complex? Holy crap. So that's a shit ton of zombies. Um... Let's go back to the house. Um... I'm going to go ahead and start with a one small whole chicken. And you're also going to need uh, three carrots, three stalks of celery. And then when I say stalk, I mean like one part of the celery, not three whole heads. Um, and then we're also going to need uh, three quarters of an onion. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to skin our chicken. We're going to take all the skin off it. Just peel it off with your fingers. It'll be easy. Um, and then what we're going to do is using a sharp knife, we're going to go ahead and cut all the meat off of our chicken. We're going to cut the breast off, cut all, the, uh, cut the meat off the drumsticks and pull it off. Um, another technique, like if, if you're beginning, I suggest doing it by taking the meat just off the bones. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is that if you were to leave the meat on the bones, you would end up, uh, overcooking the meat by the time the stock was done. So... Take off the meat, or... Yeah, let's just go with take off the meat. Let's not be wishy-washy. So take the meat off the chicken, and then go ahead and have peel the carrots, and dice the carrots, celery, and onion to all about the same size. Looking for about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to go ahead and set aside one carrot's worth of dice, uh, one carrot's worth, one celery stalk's worth, and a quarter of the onion. And we're going to go ahead and set that aside. And then you, what we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of those veggies and put them in the bottom of a six-quart stock pot. And then we're going to put our chicken bones, like just the carcass, the leftover bones, into the pot. And we're going to go ahead and cover that with water. And we're going to go ahead and cover that with at least an inch of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this on medium-low heat. And we're going to let this come to a simmer, which means to have little tiny bubbles popping up. And we're going to let that simmer for four to six hours. Now, during this time, you're not going to want to like just ignore it completely for the four to six hours. You're going to want to come back and check on it periodically. And if it looks like the water's... Hey, no, no, I have nothing. Really? Oh, nothing. Bye. I really do. You can have my bow? Thanks. Uh, that sucked. We just died. Um, where were we in our chicken bones? What? Ah. And then we spawn and get killed by a wolf. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, thanks for telling me that you don't want me playing you anymore. Uh, we were doing so well, too. We found a bunch of twine. That sucks. Um, so we have our, our stock simmering. And we're going to go ahead, if it starts to run low on water, we're going to, like, just add a little bit of water to, to get it back up to the level it was. After four to six hours, what we're going to do is we're going to take a colander, and we're going to go ahead and uh, put that into another pan or bowl, something that can hold the liquid that's inside the quart thing. Boo. What's up, dude? Not much. I just got killed. Oh, I just spawned. I'm just buying shit. No worries. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put that colander into a pot or uh, some other container. Something we can str so we can strain out all the bones and vegetables that are in this. Um, if you don't have a pot that can contain it all, put it into two separate pots. Uh, do one and then the other. And this will leave you with a perfectly uh, serviceable chicken stock. Am I going to get eaten by a zombie? Punch. 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 Punching zombies. That's what you turn into steam cuisine for, right? Not to learn how to cook, but to punch zombies in the freaking face. Take his hat, though. Let's shred our shirt. Uh, why do you put stuff in my shirt? Um, so we have our clean, our chicken stock. And what we're going to do is in a 
uh, in this the stock pot we just used, we're going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of oil, uh, vegetable oil, and we're going to go ahead and add in all of our remaining veggies, the onion, the carrots, the celery, and a heavy pinch of salt and a few grinds of black pepper. And we're going to go ahead and put this over medium high heat and we're going to sweat this which means we're going to basically put this on low heat. We don't want this sizzling, really. We just want it lowly cooking so that we can uh, get the stuff soft. Do I not have... Oh, I didn't shred my shirt. Uh, that's no good. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, sweat this for about 5 to 10 minutes just to soften it up a bit. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our stock again to the pot and then we're going to add in the chicken meat and we're going to return this to medium high heat and we're going to let it simmer for about 30 to 35 minutes or until all the chicken meat is cooked through which you'll be able to tell because it basically shred apart and then at that point we have a delicious chicken soup that you've made yourself that is very cheap to make and is wonderful on these these cold cold nights it is freezing even out here in california and i can't imagine what it's like elsewhere in the country so uh one final tidbit for this is that if you wanted to make this into a chicken noodle soup what you would do is you would take about a half a cup of macaroni noodles either i prefer the small circular noodles not the long like craft macaroni and cheese noodles but just the circles because they fit really easy on a spoon like the worst thing to have with chicken noodle soup is the noodles that are flopping over your spoon and you can't eat it and yeah it's fun to slurp it but we're not five so we want something that'll sit on the spoon nice and easy um, what you'll do is you'll just add the noodle to the simmering stock uh, after the chicken's done cooking and let it simmer until the pasta's cooked through and then it's done uh, What you'll do is you'll taste it and make sure it has enough salt and pepper and just go with your, your instincts on that Taste it and if you're not sure ask one of your family members or friends to taste it and Ask them does this need more salt and they'll tell you and if it does then add more salt. It's very easy so in conclusion, I hope that uh, that you look forward to learning how to cook with me. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below or email us at steamcuisinelive at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a post on our Facebook page, which is also at steamcuisinelive.com. Um, and I hope to see you next week for our next topic. And in two weeks for the second episode of The Beginner's Guide.